Thank you all for coming today on this profoundly sad day for DPS and all of law enforcement. I'm Bart Graves, I'm spokesman for the Department of Public Safety. Um, Director Frank Milstead is going to update you on this situation. Uh, it's important to know we will take questions, but on a limited basis since this is an ongoing investigation. Director Frank Milstead. Today is evidence of the violent nature of policing in our nation. It's also evidence that um, just because somebody is unarmed doesn't mean they won't become armed and harm somebody. And in this case, what initially was an unarmed man armed himself with one of our weapons, fired two shots, fatally wounding one of my troopers, and shooting another one. I can't thank the women and men of law enforcement enough to being brave enough to come to work every day and to do this job. It's incredibly difficult, and I will tell you from the time that I was on the streets of Phoenix as a young police officer to today, it continues to be more and more complicated. I'm going to run you through a little timeline. I will try not to get too much specificity in the timeline, but I think it's important to understand what we came across and also um, what seems like a innocuous type of call for service where there's a person in a roadway. If you think about somebody being on Interstate 10 in the roadway, it kind of changes that nature of the call. But at about uh, 10, 17 last night, the 25th of July, we originally received calls of a subject out in the roadway uh, and then a subject throwing objects at cars out on I-10. Several motorists had pulled over to the right-hand side of the roadway to try to get the subject out of the road. Uh, Arizona Department of Public Safety Communications received these calls and dispatched uh, two sets of officers. Uh, both of them were just within minutes of the event. First to arrive on scene was Officer Dale and Doris who arrived and within about one minute of arriving, asked for another unit, asked for a backup. About one minute after that, uh, officers, or troopers Roadcap and Trooper uh, Edenhofer arrived. Uh, Trooper Edenhofer was in uh, field training. He was actually in his last days of field training. He had graduated from the State Trooper Academy on May 4th. He'd been one of my troopers for 52 days. Somewhere in this instance, there was a fight that ensued as they tried to get the subject off of the roadway. This is an ongoing investigation. The detectives are still conducting interviews and uh, looking at physical evidence. They collected some 70 items of evidence from the roadway and from the scene. Ultimately, the suspect, who I will identify here shortly, was able to take control of officer or trooper road caps duty weapon and fire two shots, mortally wounding one and striking the other in the upper right shoulder area. Suspect has no criminal history. He's an African-American male. He's 20 years old. His name is Isaac King. He has mental health history. Uh, he apparently was on medication for uh, anxiety and depression. We've talked to his parents, his mother particularly, who has been cooperative and thought he was in the backyard during this event. She said about 9.30 he'd been outside on the trampoline. He resides in Avondale. A couple of things strike me as we look at this. One of them was talking to Trooper Edenhofer's fiance. Um, Kaylee Seaving had her entire future in front of her and her life with Tyler to look forward to. That is gone. And the question she asked me is, why Tyler? And I don't have an answer. His mother, Debbie Edenhofer, I will never forget her words either when I went to greet her at the hospital early this morning and she said to me, you just got him. And she's right, he just got here. 
Over my career, I've lost an incredible number of friends and colleagues, both at Phoenix PD and now here. I would just ask everyone to remember the volatility of this job, the violence that goes along with it, and the fact that we asked young men and women to make split second, second decisions on their own lives and others, and then we talk about it for months to come. It is an unenviable job at times. It is the most rewarding career one could ask for. I would tell you that we see things and do things that most people would not believe. And most of us have the capacity to deal with those circumstances with the utmost grace and respect. The men and women that leadership behind me and myself represent would give their lives to save the life of somebody they don't even know. Behind me is Chief from uh, Phoenix, Jerry Williams, Chief Nanagay from Avondale, Assistant Chief from Goodyear. All of them played a part. Their departments were all a part of what happened last night. Uh, collaboratively, Arizona law enforcement looks after one another, takes care of one another. This is a very dark day for the Arizona Department of Public Safety. I guarantee you that we will be resilient and we will press on. I ask that you give the respect to the Edenoffer family. Uh, some have already descended upon her home. Um, her world changed this morning. Uh, her most proudest moment, her son graduating from the State Trooper Academy has changed everything. Thank you for covering this story. Thank you to Arizona for your support of law enforcement. Thank you for the support for the Arizona State Troopers and what we do and stand for. And I'll take a few of your questions. Hey, Colonel, two questions. Uh, yes, sir. The, the first is, um, how was the suspect able to get his hands on the gun? And the second is, I'm curious, do you guys do any training for when you're in a physical confrontation with a suspect to avoid um, uh, losing your, your service? So there's two questions. The first one was, how did uh, Officer Roadcap uh, lose control of his weapon? And the second part was, do we conduct draining uh, on weapons retention? Uh, I'll answer the first part uh, first, and that is, um, at this point, uh, I don't have the details. I can just tell you that there was about an eight-minute fight roadside that went on, and during that eight minutes of struggle with what would be one suspect, and uh, I would say up to six police officers, it went on for eight minutes. Um, during, and I don't know if the, car, the gun became dislodged or he felt it and took control of it. I will tell you that Trooper Roadcap was in plain clothes. Uh, this was the last week of field training, and he was not in uh, silver tan uniform, but he was in street clothes, as he was really there as a bystander uh, and not to be used a, a, as a, um, um, an ally for uh, anybody that might come up and need information. Uh, we try to focus the last week of training just on the trooper and see how they do working as a solo unit. Yeah, any of our training that's open source, we're more than happy to provide. How is the weapon secured in the holster? Um, I.e., is there like a, like, a, um, like a clip or a snap? Or so the question is, how was the uh, weapon uh, controlled in the holster? This was a, uh, a leather holster that was secured to the belt. It is a non-retention type holster, which means it only has a snap up on top and it doesn't have a mechanism with inside the holster itself to uh, keep somebody from grabbing it without hitting a button or maneuvering or manipulating the weapon in a certain angle to remove it from the holster. So it would just be a standard leather holster. What was the main item that he was throwing on the freeway and hitting cars with? The question was, what are the items that he was hitting cars with? And I do not have the answer to that. I'm sorry. How, how did he drop the gun? Did, did it get off the belt? You know, uh, the question is, how did, he, how did the gun get loose? And again, I don't know the answer to that. Um, uh, we, we are still not clear on that issue. We, we still have some interviews to do. Uh, some of this will change over time, people, that um, it's an ongoing investigation. I'm trying to give you everything that we have today that I'm able to release. So he wasn't in his tan uniform. He was in plain street clothes with his standard utility belt? He was actually in blue jeans and a T-shirt. He looked just like, uh, like a, he was a citizen observer that night.
Mr. King did not have a criminal background. That is correct. What are the status now? Do you know if uh, any of the troopers have drawn their guns on the suspect? I do not know the answer to that, sir. And the question was, do I know whether they drew their weapons? Uh, I don't know if that occurred or not. Um, we're still going through those types of interviews. Uh, one more question. What is, how are you doing? How am I doing? <laughs> um, I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, uh, it's an honor to lead the men and women of this fine agency. It's an honor to be a member of Arizona law enforcement for as long as I have. Um, and I ask myself, uh, if not me, who? Uh, who gets to, uh, to lead in times of trouble? And I'm honored to do so. Um, obviously, uh, quite shaken by the uh, circumstances. Uh, it's been uh, a long evening and morning, but uh, I appreciate you asking, but uh, I'm proud to lead. Thank you for your time. I hope you all uh, uh, get all the answers you're looking for as we do. Uh, and I ask you to, for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you. BIOs, Captain Mapp will be around to answer any other questions uh, regarding things associated with the investigation. You all